this is quite a rig we've got here this morning. This Love is not it. the usual setup. This is just like downtown. This is like my office at home. Uh, I, I, was, I was just thinking, this really does look just like your home yes. office studio. Yes. So we are here at Microsoft Ignite with an amazing crowd of 20, over 28,000 attendees. They're not here. It's huge. They're and all behind us. <laughs> yeah, they're all behind us. We're not doing crowd shots. So no, all no. 28,000 yes. here this morning, yes. Mom. Just so I had to say hi to Mom. Yeah, I hear you. you know, she, we know she's watching. Um, and both of our moms usually watch our show, Adam, just in case you were wondering. It's, so you should definitely give a shout-out to Is them. that like a nighttime falling asleep thing? Or? Most of the time, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with my Just mom, it's either, it's either our show or uh, Safari Jeopardy. Live. Oh. So the Safari okay. Live guys usually win. Though, my, so. my mom faithfully shares everything technical I post on Facebook uh, with all of her friends. <laughs> it's, I'm sure they love it. That's, uh, that's good mom. Added right. value. So we are here today talking about business intelligence, and we have a very special guest we've already started talking to. <laughs> right now, he's Adam Saxton. Adam Saxton. But <gasps> now he's got Guy in a cube. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, you know, not that you can see us anymore, but... <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. It's fine. It's for reading. So we, we've spent lots of time uh, here at the show talking about business intelligence. I did a PowerShell session yesterday, but the rest of the time... How'd it go? Uh, it was overflowing. There were so uh, many folks like laying down in the aisles. I think they wanted a nap. It's because you didn't use the right PowerShell command to buffer. You are correct. Okay. I, I did use a, a, a get sleep command. Okay. So, you know... That was, uh, that was probably a mistake on my part. But uh, no, it was a theater session. It was only 20 minutes. It's usually an hour and 15 minute session I do. And I crammed it into 20 minutes. It was really fast. But yeah. man, there were tons of people there. Yeah. So lots of people still learning the basics on certain stuff. Um, and this week has been, uh, there have been some nice announcements this week. We've seen some good stuff. Uh, my favorite is still one that's not super technical. It's the uh, AI for humanitarian efforts. And that, that Sajid talked about in the keynote, I thought that was super awesome. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of all those types of things. Um, what was meaningful for you so far at the show, John? For me, I've been kind of wrapped up in what we're doing with TIEGRAPH at our booth, so uh, <laughs> I haven't had eyes on. I think um, we went to the, uh, we went to the, basically the BI keynote session yesterday morning and got the, got the vision laid out for where they're going over the next year or so. Um, so that was probably the most meaningful thing for me. I'm not letting you off the hook, though. You guys did something really awesome here at the show. You released a release candidate, a part of your product that wraps around a Microsoft product that is inside of Power BI. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, TIEGRAPH for Teams product. So um, I believe we're the first to market with a full-fledged analytic product that drills into all of the Teams conversations you're having, who your influencers are, all of that sort of thing. So uh, the booth... Booth activity has been pretty uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool product. If you haven't had an opportunity to check it out, definitely recommend you get out there. And uh, if you're here at the show and watching this on our live stream, uh, and even after the fact, go check out TIEGRAPH for that because it is, it's just super hot getting to see the analytics around Teams. Teams is the, one of the big hot topics here at the show this year. Um, they're getting all kinds of love all over the place. They, it, it's hot, but last night I saw at the team's uh, happy hour, they actually had a team's ice sculpture. Yeah, it was pretty neat. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was co literally cool. <laughs> it I, was pretty cool. When I saw it, like walking from the hotel over to the convention center, there's like 14 different team focus rooms for yeah. like customer engagements. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Like I, I didn't good. see any others. I just saw teams. Uh, I, I've seen Azure, but that's about it. There certainly yeah. wasn't one for SharePoint this year. So, no. But, you know, SharePoint had some really cool announcements they yesterday did. as well. There were a bunch of shows focused on SharePoint, so we're not going to spend any time on that. We have Adam here this morning. Adam, what's been meaningful for you at the show so far this year? The big thing I loved is, was the keynote with Satya when they talked about the open data partnerships that we have with Adobe and SAP. Yeah. Like, for me, that's, that's a big deal. And especially when we talk about Power BI and, and data, getting into massive data, talking about the new common data model items and with Dynamics and Azure and just, just spreading data out throughout the entire cloud infrastructures at Microsoft, it's a big deal. That is so really I'm very really excited cool. about that. The thing yesterday during the, the uh, Power BI keynote when Amir and, and Arun uh, sort of hosted <laughs> and had a whole bunch of folks, uh, it didn't tick for me until yesterday during the keynote what the XML endpoint actually oh, yeah. is going to mean. And oh, I yeah. tweeted about it, and it just got all kinds of love. Because it, what, we went to dinner with Amir the night before, yeah. and he explained it. 
and, but it wasn't until we, we we saw some slides and talked about it. You know, he talked about it during the keynote that it truly ticked for me. And we had a conversation with Arun yesterday <clears throat> as well, which is going to go out into a later podcast. Um, but the fact that it opens up the ability for other people who are using other services mm -hmm. to be able to come in and consume Power BI models, yep. that was massive to me because yeah. unfortunately Rackspace is going a different way at the moment from a BI perspective, but lots of us are still using Power BI inside as well. So we're using multiple tools and to be able to service it no matter what your authoritative is for the company, Power BI is so, e so easily consumed by the analysts yep. and by people like me who are just using it every day that to be able to go, just go connect to my model. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a game changer that, for me. That's it, right? It's a connection string, right? So now I can do it from Excel. I can do it from Management Studio. I can do it from SQL Server Data Tools. And other BI platforms can take advantage of this as well. So I get really excited when I look at those other platforms and say, look, you can be powered by Power BI as well. It's exciting. It, it, and for, for me, I think it, what's compelling about it all is uh, the fact that Power BI has always been backed by analysis services, but yes. it's always been kind of closed off. Well, this completely opens it up yes. to the point yep. where we have an Azure analysis services today and we have Power BI today. I can certainly see those things completely merging. I don't see a need for two separate products. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that uh, analysis services would ever go away, not, but, not, not, not but I'm, you're absolutely yeah. right that Power BI will be the option. So if you just want to stay within that Power BI environment, that's what we want to get to. That's the vision. Yeah. And so that's going to, everything's just going to kind of coalesce there. With and, all the uh, analysis service style control, that's really what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm not saying, you know, <laughs> analysis not services an going no, away. No, 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 that's, no. That's, that's, no. Not, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not that going away. moment for the day. <laughs> it's not going away. <laughs> Let's not do that. Right. Um, so John, you, you made some notes. A few. I'm he came, just, he uh, came prepared. I'm, I'm I impressed. try to come prepared. It, it was for you guys. I, well, the, the thing I think was interesting as well about that keynote, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. and the vision that the... You're getting the, all the, choked up about it. He's all choked everything. up about <laughs> it. Yeah. And the vision that was laid out <laughs> is uh, you, you get a sense that Power BI has been running uh, running a sprint for the last two years, really, with throwing features in. I shouldn't say throwing. Three years. Um, <laughs> adding we features. had our third birthday. No, that's, oh, that's right, three years. Three We're years. just going, adding, yeah. adding features, features, yeah. at a breathtaking pace, quite yes. frankly. And over the last little while, they've really stopped to tie their shoes a bit. And there's a lot of fit and finish coming into the product at one level. And that's kind of the client experience side. And the focus yesterday was talking about uh, all the work that they're doing to make IT happy. Because, you know, Power BI has been so successful, uh, it's proliferated. Um, Amir said 97% of the Fortune 500 that's are right. using Power that's BI. Right. It's amazing. When that, that, that's really key because when we first launched, it was all about self-service, right? And we were very successful in that. We had a lot of adoption, uh, and now we're going back to our roots, right? Our, our roots is Enterprise BI with reporting services and analysis services. And so now we're focusing on Power BI there to bring that back up. We're leveraging all of the knowledge we have from that enterprise experience and we're putting it to bear on Power BI, and it's uh, all, what, what's been exciting is I've been watching this for a while, right? And now we're starting to see all of it kind of come to fruition, and it's, it's exciting. That's really awesome. Yeah, the, the, the fact that we're moving towards enterprise again works really well at, yep. at this point in time for, for a lot of the conversations I'm having with customers, <coughs> finding that Power BI is everywhere. It's in every organization. Somebody's using it for something, and it's one of those things where it, it, the maturity of it just it, it sort of hits that puberty stage very fast and yes. grows it's, up. It, it's and awkward now, and squeaky. It, <laughs> it really is. That we were at the red party last night. Well, at least I was at the red party last night. You so were that's why my party. voice is all kinds of squeaky. But you know, we you, we, we were smarter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or or not? Yeah. I, I guess I don't. I don't know. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But man, I will say, DJ Joey Snow was on the stage earlier with Patch and Switch. And the reason why we were running late is because they did their bacon bits morning session and they were not finishing all their bacon. We made, we made them stay to finish their entire breakfast. I don't know why so. you wouldn't finish the bacon. How would anybody That's not finish bacon? No, I, don't, I don't eat bacon, so I don't know. But, oh, that's true. Uh, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have a couple of other sets of notes here. We also have Sandeep, who's coming uh, from the SRS, SSRS side of the team, who's, I believe, coming around to get mic'd up here in just a He's minute. Right here. So uh, we're going to have him come up and join on the stage here in just a minute. So Sandeep, you're getting mic'd up this morning and coming on stage. <laughs> there we go. Cues, I'm telling you. We're rocking and rolling now. <laughs> we're a well-oiled <laughs> machine. We are. John, what else did you have there in your notes? Well, just drilling into some of the things that they're doing to make the enterprise happy. Things yeah. like uh, the certified data sets feature is 
coming. Certified uh, data sets uh, are yeah. coming, yeah. And so, and uh, yeah, so certified data sets are going to be a way that organizations can really highlight those data sets that are kind of key to the central business, right? So you'll have access to a bunch of data sets that other folks will put out there, and what we want to do is be able to bubble up. These are the ones that are kind of like the trusted or the ones that are signed off on. Mm -hmm. I, I know like when I've worked in uh, the teams that I've been on, we had our central kind of IT data set. This is the one that executive management looked yes. at. And then, you know, we had our own little team dashboard to kind of help us going out. So if they wanted to create it from the source of truth, they'd want to go to that enterprise one. And now you can actually mark that this is the one that you should be using. It's that, it's that G word that we, from the SharePoint side of the world, we've been very familiar with for years from the, the data side. Governance. Governance. It, governance. it gives you some, that governance, that capability of proper data management and that approval status <coughs> right. that says, hey, as, as central IT or as, it's not even central IT. No, it's, it's, it's the central data organization, right. Yeah. right? They're the ones who have to bless off on data. It's not yeah. about the servers running in the background. That's all being taken care of by Power, by power BI. Well, I, and I use the term IT loosely in the sense of those are the folks that are managing it, the DBAs or the, the business folks. Yeah. So. Well, the, the, the <coughs> IT folks are now, you know, one of the comments that we, we've heard, you know, happen over and over again that this week so far is about premium capacity. Yep. And as you look at premium capacity, it's, it's moving from Microsoft manages everything to, well, you're not having to go off and tune the engine itself. <coughs> you do have to keep an eye on your world. You have to know, you know, be monitoring and know that when you're running out of capacity, it's a matter of being able to add or pair back where you need to and be able to adjust those things in the yeah. right way. And Josh Kaplan and I did a talk yesterday where we looked at premium capacity management and just sizing, like how do you size it? So be sure to check that out if, if you haven't seen it. Where is that going to be posted? Uh, so so the session we did yesterday, I believe that's going to be on the Ignite site. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Josh and I also took some time and recorded a video that's going to go out on Guy in a Cube here shortly, mm -hmm. uh, probably next week. And if you don't follow <laughs> Guy in a Cube and you're watching this show, you should be following Guy in the Cube <laughs> on YouTube. So that's definitely a thing. I think we've talked about that a couple hundred times. A couple yeah, hundred yeah, times yeah. on that's this podcast. Right. I yeah. appreciate it. I talk about you guys too. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Sometimes in front of your back. Well, yeah, that's, 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 right? that's right? the best way right. to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually we don't want to yeah, know, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so I mean the premium, uh, just the monitoring performance, those items have really, we've had a ton of customer discussions and the session we did yesterday was all came out of those discussions. And uh, just to follow up, I had with Josh for Guy in a Cube. It's really targeting on those of when to know. There's so many factors that go into this that uh, it's, everyone wants the magic bullet. Like, oh, do I need a P2? I don't know. It depends, <laughs> right? What are you doing with it? And how many people are using it? So there's, there's just a lot of stuff that we're trying to educate people to, to get them into that mindset. And Josh put out some good guidance on that in July, I believe it was. So. Yes, and we've been adding to it based on some of the recent discussions we've been having with customers. So uh, good discussions. A lot of it goes back to the data model. So I, I think one of the struggles was we were so good with the self-service, and you get it out into just the Power BI service, it just runs, right? Because we Microsoft owns and manages that, and we'll scale accordingly. But when you move to premium, you need to be a, build, need to be a little bit more thoughtful about your model, how you've designed it. So don't just shove everything into it and and hey, it's just going to work. Yeah. So we got to be, we got to actually some do some data modeling. I've run into a lot of that, especially, yeah. especially before that guidance was made available, yeah. but we're not going to go there. Yep. <laughs> so. I, I, one of the other big things I think it's worth ch uh, calling out from the enterprise side is application lifecycle management's coming in uh, through a tool that uh, you yep. guys are, are going to be providing in conjunction with Mac software, I believe. Absolutely. It's called the ALM Toolkit. Yeah. And what this will do, if you're familiar with the old BISM analyzer, this is the tool that's really taking that to the next level. We like to take things to the next yeah. level, right? Right. And uh, so this will allow you to compare your models, and it'll do diffs and apply those changes. You can script that out, throw it into source control. You can do all sorts of things. That is really, it's really, really It's going to be really powerful. Uh, source control for PDIX files. Is well, uh, that's not what I said. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little ahead there. Yeah, I hear you. been doing some really great stuff. We've, yeah. we've, we've been commenting. It seems like every other month, at least, they're putting out new visuals. The visuals, yeah. Really great stuff to get to watch them. They're here yeah. on the trade show floor. Definitely, we need to go by and we go need for to a visit and see if yeah. we can get an interview with them yeah. as well. But one of the other things that they showed yesterday during the keynote was this new diagram view thing. Love which it. yeah. It's, it's on the, so, on the desktop, so yeah. impressive. Wow. When, uh, the way we like to demo this off is uh, we start in, zoomed in on like a table or two, and then we just slowly peel it back, and then it just reveals like hundreds of tables. 
But that's not really the cool thing. The cool thing is now I can have like tabs down below or pages yep. of those diagram views and section off pieces of my model mm -hmm. that are appropriate to what I want to go look at. I'd seen that. What I hadn't seen before, yeah, though, yeah. was dragging one table in and clicking on it and saying, bring in all the related Just bring in the related. And it popped. And, there's and I went, yeah. oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And wow. the other thing with this new diagram view is now you can do multi-select on tables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was a little property there that I think one of you got a little excited about. You remember a little thing called display folders? Oh, that's, uh, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, 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 that's uh, So we can do display folders now. What, you mean I don't have to scroll through hundreds right, of tables on the right-hand side? fields and items. And I, I like that a lot. It's had a, this in analysis services yeah. for a long time, and it's coming to Power BI Desktop. That is great. Any idea when that's going to drop into Power BI Desktop? Uh, soon. Hey, that, I like <laughs> that. That's... <laughs> that, that, that usually means within the next now, three I, months so, because well, you guys are, are working. So I, I, we showed this off at Business Application Summit at the end of July, and we said that everything that was shown there will be out in the next three months. Ish. So, so, so pretty soon. Pretty soon. Hey. Pretty soon. Uh, maybe, maybe, not, maybe not October for that <laughs> one. <laughs> well, I, I, can, I, I can hope. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll have folders for Christmas. Maybe. So you never know. Yeah. That, 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 that would be a good present. Gift wrap just for you. Hey, I'm telling you. And yeah. yeah. Especially when you're Jewish. It, it, it's, it's always well, good to get a gift on Christmas. So you'll get eight nights of gifts. Yeah, that works right? too. Just, just go through one at a time, one a night I'll of make, features I'll make that come folders. out. Yes. There you go. There you go. So, so do, you, do you know anything else cool coming to the desktop? <sighs> so one thing that is coming to the desktop for November, a lot of people have been asking for this, is this ability to copy and paste which we did for the matrix, right? So you can copy values out and then paste that out, which is really cool. That's a lot of people cool. like that. Yep. Uh, but the bigger thing that people have been asking for is I want to copy something in Power BI Desktop in my one report file, and then I want to paste it in a different file. <laughs> this is when you do the spit take. Yes. That's and uh, I, I was told that I can say that the, it, is, it will be there in the November release. That is awesome. I'm Very excited. Soon. Do you know how many so happy times Hanukkah. I could have used Thank that? You. That is awesome. It's, a lot of people have been waiting for that, so that it's coming. Awesome. Okay. It's coming. We'll, we'll binge that like turkey dinner on That's American it. Thanksgiving. we will be oh. pasting across eight files. and Man, oh, man. Because right be, now I awesome right? stuff. Yeah, right now I have to save off, start from right, the PBIX right. file. It yep. Can't do it ad hoc. Nope. Oh, so that'll copy and paste awesome. between desktop files in November. That is very it's cool. Be great. Yeah. We have not gotten a chance to talk with, uh, with Amanda, who's in charge of that. She's been wanting to talk to you guys. She's well, been really busy yes. this week, though. And you guys have, too, obviously. Yeah, but but we, we're going to find some time and make sure that we yes. get her on the show. Maybe, maybe we'll get her on for a November episode yeah. and get to come and talk about all of those She cool would things. love that. So that'd be awesome. Well, I think Sandeep is probably mic'd up by now. If you want to come up and join us, because we actually have some viewer questions Ooh. that we were saving until Sandeep came and joined us. But before we do that, let's get, up get here, Sandeep. Sandeep all set up and seated. How you doing, man? Morning. morning. It's been a long time yeah. since dinner. So well, lots of <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Sandeep. Hi. So would you mind uh, introducing yourself to our audience? Hi. Uh, I work on the reporting services dev team. Um, now we are kind of uh, getting RDL into Power BI. So that's, that's what we're working on. That is awesome. Paginated yes. reports. Pixel perfect. I'm Power BI. Another one of those enterprise features we're talking about. It That's is. something enterprises have needed, yeah. and they've been lacking the ability to do paginated reports in the cloud. Um, Chris gets uncomfortable when I do this, but I, I, I've been telling him <laughs> for about the last year, you know, PBIRS, they closed the loop. They render all different report types on premises, but we couldn't do that one type, the paginated, the old style SSRS report in the cloud, and that's what you're working this on. Yep, yep. Well, yeah. we, we used to have that, though. Yes, you had a, a version ago. of Azure reporting yeah, services. Yeah, it was, you know. <laughs> it didn't live this, long. This is the real deal, though. <laughs> yeah. This is the real deal. Yeah. This is something that customers, when I, when I go out and talk to them, they, this is one of those things that they say, it, all that stuff that you just showed me is really cool, Jason. That's really neat. I'm glad to see that we can do all of those things, self-service. When am I getting RDL on the cloud? That, yeah. they, they keep asking for it. And honestly, some of them, the rest of Power BI, they don't care about yet because you know when we dev when the, the SharePoint team and the you know the BI team decide to deprecate reporting services integrated mode, like I need to do something. I want to go to wherever's going next, and I really just I don't want to have any more servers on prem for this stuff. When am I going to be able to do RDL in the cloud? Because I still need that functionality. I need parameters. I need all of these things. When am I going to get to do that? We keep telling them it's coming soon, and you guys have 
you know, been able to come out and say, yes, we're, we're almost yeah. there. We've got it in a preview now, yeah. and it looks awesome. It's in private preview right now, so we have customers already using it. Um, it was supposed to go out public preview this month. Um, it wasn't quite there, so we thought, okay, well, we'll hold off a little bit. It's coming up, uh, coming up very soon to public preview, so uh, premium capacities, you'll be able to go turn it on and uh, uh, upload your RDLs into Power BI and uh, start rendering them. And it was something you mentioned there, uh, you need dedicated capacity to run it. And a yeah. lot of people are you know, kind of questioning that that I've heard from. But the reality is, there's, I don't believe that's a long-term vision. I, can, can you address that? Yeah, um, so uh, first off, we, we can address a little bit as to why that is. Um, yeah. um, currently, on, with RDLs, you know, you learn a lot of expressions. So you run customer code in the report. So uh, we need a private container to run that expressions. We don't want uh, access to anything outside. So, that capability is currently only in premium. So that's why we had to get it going in the premium uh, workloads. And then uh, there is plans to get it in the uh, PBI shared service. Perfect. Um, it's part of the long-term vision uh, for the team. That's, that's good. Really great, yeah. I know that people are excited about it. And a lot of folks who are smaller, who aren't buying premium capacity yet, uh, you know, their premium SKUs, they, they look at it and they say, well, when am I getting all of the great things? Like, well, you know, some of this stuff costs. You're, look, you're talking about a, a, a service that is lower cost than any of the other ones that are out there doing all of these great things and continuously adding. Like, at a certain point, it's worth investing a little bit and to make sure that these things continue to happen, too. So when we talk with customers and we show them, you know, it, it abstractly looks like a big number. Yep. But when you look at it in an aggregate and over time and you put it up against the server costs for on-prem, including running everything and doing all of that, plus the licensing, the costs really are very slim in comparison. Yeah, and yeah. The, the, the bigger vision on premium too, because we talk about RDL, like we want that to come to shared, and uh, incremental refresh was another one where we said it's going to come for pro users as well. Mm -hmm. And the overall vision for premium is we don't want it to necessarily be a feature issue between the two. We want it to, you know, we'll, we'll gate like, hey, what can you do? You can only have one gig, you know, bigger data models over here, so you'll have limits. Uh, but you know, we're going to get it to premium and then we're going to get it past the technology hurdle of getting it into shared, which is more of that distributed environment. So we've got to be a little more cautious going to shared just because it could impact many customers based on load. Yeah. Whereas premium, you're dedicated, you're isolated, so it's not, it's easier to get it there first and then we've got to get it into the spot where everyone can use it. So that's the overall vision for the, for the premium features. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Uh, you know, right. But then again, I don't pay the bill at the end of the night. Yeah. So, you know, that's, I, I just go dance. <laughs> and you I dance. I put my shoes in the middle and I just so dance. Well. It's, why, thank you. We like didn't the wear dresses dance. this year. We did not so wear we're, dresses we're, this year. We're, we're good. The red party was not that kind of party this year. Uh, so, but I do, we do have a, a viewer question and comment. Sure. Um, so, uh, th this came from, uh, actually came from Redmond. It did. By way of Philadelphia. Yeah. What is it like to work with the great Christopher Finland? <laughs> <laughs> Because you know, we, we've had him on a couple of times, and that guy is uh, is a lot of fun to have as an interview. Uh, He's just a big teddy bear. That's all <laughs> he is. Yeah. That's and his new nickname. <laughs> I, I, I think we need to make shirts for him that Te say teddy bear. Teddy bear. <laughs> teddy bear. Yeah, like he would it. love that. He would really love that. Uh, Chris, what, what, Chris, what is, you... Chris is great. We, we, we've had him on. We actually had him recording an episode that we had to pull, unfortunately, because of timing. <laughs> uh, you know, he said a little too much. And that's one of the great things about doing these things when they're not live streamed is that we get a chance to go back and edit and cut uh, some stuff out. So we're going to have Chris on another time because we've, we've dropped that into an episode earlier where we mentioned that we had stuff in the can with Chris. So we're going to be re-recording that and put that out in, in a future episode. We actually had him on the show last year at Ignite. We did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't have this awesome studio set up. No. We had a different awesome studio set up. And it's great audience. Yes. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Pretty great. Thank you, you guys, guys are for good. coming out. So make sure you pick up. By the way, we did swag. Oh, yeah, we did too. swag. So. so make so, sure you guys so get to do you, do you want to know what it's like to I work with Chris? I do want to know. Yeah. But I was trying to give him time to think because we oh, didn't okay. prep you for <laughs> this question. I was, I was prepped, by the way. You have roommate on, I'm pretty what happens when you get here early. <laughs> um, oh, guy's great. I mean, like he has a great sense of humor. Oh, yeah. um, one of the things with PMs is that they like to drag conversations, and they always ask for more. And Chris, sometimes, like he's always to the point, like, okay, let's get this out. You know, we can always iterate on it. So that aspect, yeah, we, we love him on that part. Yeah, Chris is very pragmatic, so yeah. it's. Uh, uh, I, I would say for anyone that you know, if you see Chris in the hallway or like at a conference flow sh uh, show floor, is to definitely go up to him and say that the Philadelphia Eagles suck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can get that going. 
Yeah, yeah, he's Chris, a big Chris would, Chris would engage with you in a very thoughtful conversation uh, yeah, that would uh, result in a hug at the end. Because so. <laughs> he's a big teddy bear. He is, he is a big teddy Chris bear. Chris likes hugs. I, 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 I actually, he, this is Chris's style, and it's, and it's uh, pertinent to what we're talking about here. <laughs> um, over the summer, with the release of SharePoint 2019, or the pre public preview of SharePoint 2019, <laughs> yes. I've been quite anxious to be able to tell people what's going to be in it and what's not going to be in it. And when the, uh, pub uh, the public preview of SharePoint 2019 came out, there's of course an associated blog post, and they talk about the deprecated features. Well, I'm sorry, Bill, but it was pretty wishy-washy. It, yes. it, it was very vague as to what would be in there and why, et cetera. And we and did I was, still bear that feedback. We did. Pretty, pretty we uh, did. directly. We did. But uh, so, <laughs> so I w went to the Business Application Summit in Redmond, and Chris had a, had a talk on uh, futures for on-premises reporting, and the mo one of the first slides he put up is yeah. SharePoint, <laughs> power pivot, <laughs> power pivot for SharePoint, Depre or gone, <laughs> reporting <laughs> services running in SharePoint at all, gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's just dum dum dum. Thank you. <laughs> well, and I think the bigger point there is now we can we can embed into SharePoint. Yes. Right? So I mean, it's not like it you can't do it yeah. with SharePoint. Oh, we, we all agree we with the strategy. We released a new SharePoint web part just uh, specifically yeah. for that. So uh, it's not like we're leaving our customers hanging. So there's, oh, there's no, a solution no, no. there. Yeah. No, no. I just it's wanted exactly we just the opposite. We just yeah. wanted the clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, and, you know, we, we we've been talking about this for years. Doing BI inside of SharePoint was not easy. We're SharePoint yeah. guys, by the way. If yes. you didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. However. <laughs> it allowed me to work closer with my sweet mistress of Kerberos. Yes, yes, the dirty, dirty. <laughs> oh, I love Kerberos. You, you, you. Have SharePoint and I had a very good relationship there. With you have a dungeon in your basement, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's where I keep Fluffy. <laughs> you do. Have I have a Fluffy. He has a He has, he has a stuffed Kerberos doll. I take it with me when doll. I do Kerberos talks. <laughs> yeah. I, I have seen I have seen the uh, the, the Cerberus. It's uh, fluffy. I, I am not a Kerberos fan. You and I had this whole long debate. Hey, uh, hey, the other you night. like Kerberos? Uh, I know you do. It, it's, it, it, it bit me one too many times. Three heads and thought too many opportunities to bite. But back to the SharePoint point. Uh, <laughs> SharePoint and BI had a very contentious. I Is that a word? Words. Contentious. 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 Thank yes, you. Thank Contentious. You. Uh, yeah. Contentious? So. <laughs> it works. My mom was a reading teacher. I don't have to be able to say the words as long right. as I can read. Everyone understands text. where you're going. With it. <laughs> That's right. So uh, the, the relationship wasn't very happy. It was, it was back and forth. It was very rough going. Every time an update came out, we had to go do lots of things in order to make it happen. Uh, SharePoint, as, as it matured as a product, it just sort of grew and grew and grew. More stuff got thrown into it. And SharePoint has gone on a big weight loss program with the 2016 and 2019 world. It's getting lean and mean. It, it is. is. It's got its groove it's back a little bit. It's, uh, all sorts of awesome stuff happening over in the SharePoint world, but mainly because they're focused on SharePoint again and letting all the right things come from the right other product teams as opposed to trying to do everything. And it's great to see, and it's a lot of fun to get to work with because we get to bring in the best of all of these other yeah. spaces. And Power BI being one of those specific ones, when you're in SharePoint Online, you get that capability. And now we can do embedding with PBRS uh, as well. All sorts of great stuff. So not a, not a problem in the world with the fact that it's it, uh, two separate worlds because everything plays nicely across the boundaries. Uh, you know, especially as w with Graph and all those other things. And, you know, SharePoint, I said, let's go do the right things in the right spaces, so. Yep. And again, you're, you're closing the loop on that. You've, you've, you've got the on-prem server that talks to SharePoint on-premises, and now we're going to be able to do all the same stuff up in yep. the cloud with the SharePoint online. So I think it's a, I think it's a great story, frankly. Yep. And uh, just a quick shout out to the team. We have a rock star dev team, man. It's not just RDL on Power BI. We're working on Power BI Report Server. Right. We had a release in August. We're going to have one more in November. We just updated Report Builder. Now we have enter data capability in it, just like you yep. could do it in Power BI reports. Now you could just enter data in there, embedded into the RDL itself. That came out. I think we have a Report Viewer Control update. Yep. Um, all this from the same 20 odd devs. So. Yeah. There, wow. We, we, were, we were having a conversation with Arun yesterday, and, and part of the conversation was just how amazing it is that you guys are able to do as much as you are and be as accessible to the community as you are because the ideas at powerbi.com the things that you all are knocking off are the top things that are coming up there. When people put comments in on the blog post, people respond. When we talk about things on the MVP DL, man, people respond really fast. The product team truly cares about the feedback and response loop here. And so we always encourage people to go out to ideas.powerbi.com, 
put in your suggestions, your questions, your problems that are there, because you guys look at them. And, yeah. and we, f we found out that every time you get one of those survey requests in Power BI, one of those, what do you think, would you recommend to a colleague and enter your comments, you enter call comments, the senior leadership team is going to read them every Thursday. <coughs> All well, of them. What's interesting too is you look at uh, whether it's the communities at Power BI, like the groups there, the MVP DLs, and also like just Twitter, like a lot of the product teams on Twitter. And I see things like James Phillips, the VP, yep. he'll respond oh, yeah. to people. Uh, I see Amir responding to people yep. very actively. So it's, it's across the board. It's, it's a culture thing, right? We, we engage and we want to. Yeah, it's been really and great. And we love the feedback, so. Uh, you need to make more swag, though, is what, is what we I were do hearing. agree. I do agree. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working that, on it. I'm, I'm working we on need, getting these shirts out to, to people. We, we so. need more people in Power BI swag. Yes. Yeah. I want the bright yellow one that you were wearing yesterday. The, the beacon shirt? Not the one you were wearing the, yesterday. You want, you but want it? One like Just it. take it off my back. Nah, it's okay. Can, Actually, it's sitting, it's, can, it's dirty now. It's kind of sweaty. You want to, it's like a, it's like a, game jersey. you know, so you could take it and frame it. Will Thompson has a fancy shirt. He got it done from That one is not the Power BI yellow, though. That is an interesting color. I know. He calls it mustard. I have a different word for it. <laughs> uh, I will. I will not. You know. <laughs> well, we can get that so. fixed. But yes, I, I'm. I'm. I'm talking with some people to see if we can maybe spark that up a little bit. Give, give some more love in that area. <laughs> and, and one thing that we, we do like to mention is that the Power BI user groups are out there as well. <coughs> Absolutely. So you know you can go out and go put that into the show notes for this show yep. and put it into the YouTube stream as, as well, well as the uh, the Power BI World Tour is going on. So Seattle's coming up, and then Dallas is in November. So yeah, are you going to be in Dallas? I'm going to be in Dallas World Tour. Yeah, very cool. Hope to get to make it up there and get yeah. to see you up in yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yeah. So We're both Texas boys. So yes, we are. Go Texas. I, I, I should ask you, Sandeep, <laughs> um, I didn't get a chance to make it to your session the other day. Um, conflicts. Um, what, uh, what would you like people to know about what you were talking about in your session? Um, so we have one coming up on Friday. We had a couple of uh, Expo Theater sessions there. Yeah. Uh, we spoke a lot, a lot of things about the Power BI Report Server, which came out in August. Uh, we have external custom visual support now, uh, support for SAP HANA, Direct Query. Um, we have a big release coming up in November for PBR Report Server. Uh, we have roll-up security now, which is going to come out. That's, a, that's been a big been ask. RLS in Power BI Report Server? People that's keep asking. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah. coming. That's coming in the next release. Uh, that's, that's big <laughs> there. Uh, on uh, RDL and Power BI, yeah, we are uh, getting up for the preview. So, uh, when it comes out, uh, or if you're part of the uh, private preview, you can already use it. Uh, we support SQL Server, I mean, data type. And then we also support Gateway. And then you can connect to your on-prem SQL Server and then uh, on-prem AS. Yep. So RDL in the cloud will, when, it first, when it's first released, it's yep. going to support. I didn't think that, that was going to yeah. happen. That's, uh, that's it'll fantastic. support Azure SQL, <laughs> obviously. And then uh, uh, via the Gateway, we support on-prem SQL Server and on-prem AS. Yeah. Um, so, so in the beginning, it'll be a limited data set, and I, I it'll, it'll grow so. as we go. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to stop. So yeah. it's you're going to have export capabilities, uh, print as part of uh, yes. uh, preview. So for for paginated reports, actual yes. paginated reports. The, the interactive yes. reports will they're coming. It's being worked PDF, on. PDF, yes. PDF. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. coming, yeah. but it's it's being worked on. It's not coming as part of. No, that. I get the difference. I get the difference. They're a little different. That Just want to make that sure. Is, that is spectacular because <laughs> that's something that I didn't think was going to come at the beginning. Yes. Yep. You know, they're, they're meant to be printed reports. That's what RDLs are. Yep. So that, you know, originally when, when we heard about it, I thought, well, that's going to come later because trying to print from the cloud sometimes it, it doesn't quite render out properly. It's awesome that you guys are going to be doing that and pulling from on-prem data as well. Yep. And then we'll have subscription snapshots and caching. They'll all come in right after that. I mean, it's in the pipeline, so that's what we're going to work on. Data, data alerts, should I ask him about data alerts? I'm, I kind of want to ask him about data <laughs> alerts. That was a SharePoint feature. Yes. It, yeah, <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a really great thing to actually get to see there. In, uh, Just yeah, saying, I, I, it's, I it's a SharePoint it feature. Was, it was a great feature. Something SharePoint did right when it came to data for a change. You Te know? Technically, <laughs> we did that. No, yes, it but, but it was. But you put it in it SharePoint. It was in SharePoint. So, but, so you've done it, so you guys, that should be it should a, we've done it. I, I'm just saying, feature request. I'm going to go out to ideas.powerbi.com right now. Do that. I'm going to go ahead love and the feedback. Uh, I'll wait until after the show. Our, our RDL web part in SharePoint Modern Pages, that would be really cool, too. But anyway. <laughs> kind of like the Power BI web port? So, web kind of like that, kind actually. Like that? Yeah, but for RDLs. But for RDLs. Okay. Exactly. That would be amazing. Right, write that down. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would almost be magic. <laughs> With a unicorn and everything. Yeah, that, and but, if, if, if it, when it was loading, there was able to be a unicorn, like, Again, no, feature, feature you requests. Can't, you can't get rid of Mr. Spinny. 
Yeah. Mr. Spinney's he's been is, there. Is that for his a name, while. Mr. Spinney? Uh, they, he was passionately referred to as just Spinney, and then I called him Mr. Spinney. So <laughs> well, I took some liberties with it, but yeah, it's, it was actually called Spinney. <laughs> you heard it here yeah, first, Mr. Spinney. You have paperclip, and then you have Mr. Spinney. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, Dan Usher yesterday posted a 3D version of, Twi uh, of Clippy that his son apparently made. That would really be disturbing. Adorable. I saw yeah. some cosplay images of uh, Mr. Clippy. Really? Yes. It was just a clothespin that had been colored in. Oh, okay, but, you know, okay. Still, okay, that, that okay. was that's about as much effort as needs to go into more Clippy, uh, Clippy <laughs> stuff. So, uh, but yeah. So wait, what, wait what to derail the conversation there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good. No, we 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 we're, we're talking about RDL in the cloud again. But I, I'm I'm really glad you guys haven't lost fact of the uh, lost sight of the fact that there's still a very sizable on-premises um, yeah. deployment for BI. And I'm just wondering if. You've, First of all, do you know how big that is? Uh, how significant that is? Um, I can't give you exact numbers, but adoption is growing. It's very strong. It's uh, you would be surprised, yeah. Both SSRS yep. and PBRS yes. adoption yeah. is uh, growing. Every time we look at those numbers, strong. we're like, wow, <laughs> like it's amazing. So, so people it's, use it. Yeah, well, that, that that's important. <laughs> so you, you haven't just you know in in the rush to the cloud, you, you guys aren't. Aren't, aren't no. abandoning everybody fact, sitting on the we, we have three to four releases uh, every year, so that's going strong. So, and compared to one every three years, that's that's pretty aggressive yeah. as well. Yeah. Progress. It's, it's, it's progress. definitely progress. And I love the way you've done it too. Things like with things like desktop. Um, basically, I know exactly what's going to be in the no November release of desktop. It'll be what's ever in the remember <laughs> November release of uh, Power BI or Power BI desktop for the cloud. Yeah. And just stamped in time. Yeah. I mean, without the capability of Minus doing preview, preview features. features. Yeah. There, there's, there's Is that something that you see going long term? You know, I, I, I know that there's one team at this point. Is that re is that realistic to expect long term that we're going to continue to see this? snapshot and bring forward, or do you see at some point where the on-prem features may start to tail a little bit and we're yeah. more seeing more focus on the cloud? No, nothing like that. I think uh, we've shared this vision sometime last year, or last couple of years, and that's what we've been executing on. The first thing was to get Power BI onto on-prem. We did that, we've been delivering on that, so that's going to go on continuously uh, on its own ship cycle. And now the other part of the, uh, uh, the uh, vision we promise is to get RDL into the cloud, so we're going to deliver on that. Uh, we did increase a little bit in the size of the team, so, uh, but it's coming up. It's, the team is very agile, so we'll keep moving on to multiple things and keep shipping it up and then move on to the next thing. So, And I know the, the desktop team's hard at work as well, and they're looking at how do we, how do we optimize that. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't know that there's anything I could say going you know, in a near-term uh, future, but... No announcements? No, no, not, not on that <laughs> front. But I mean, they are, there are always discussions about how do we streamline things, how do we make it easier. And so I know like, like folks like Kim Manis, Will Thompson, Amanda Kofsky, and, and all the devs, they, they're all thinking about it. So it's not like we're just ignoring that. So they're definitely working on it. Very cool. What else did you have on your list of notes <coughs> there, John? It, it, it just it pretty much covers everything. I, I, I do want to highlight how important that product is for the SharePoint people. I mean, that, that is, I mean, you, in 2015, you guys came out and said, BI, or reporting on premise is SSRS, which of course is Power BI Report Server. We haven't said it today, it's worth, worth saying. It's the SS, super set. It's B, super Power BI Report Server is the superset of SSRS, so, but we can we kind of speak of them in the same way. Um, so that's the future of reporting on-prem. We're going to take it all out of SharePoint. We're looking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, 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 it's absolutely critical, and I, and I do like the way it's gone. I like you know, the fact that you came up with the new native mode web part last year. That works. I wish it didn't require Kerberos. <laughs> Love Kerberos. Sweet mistress. <laughs> so, so are you saying that one year from now we should return and have this discussion all I over think again? We should. I absolutely. think if they'd have us back, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. I'd well, love we'll, to do we'll that. let Jason work on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. that's uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm tasked. <laughs> I got it. So, uh, yeah, one of the things for me, I think that this show, uh, when it comes to Power BI, you, you, you keep teasing about uh, the, the announcements thing, and there have been fewer announcements this Perhaps. year. Uh, and, and Power BI and, and lots of other products. I think that the reason that we're seeing that is we're seeing a lot more, <clears throat> we're seeing a lot more frequent uh, releases of things off cycle. That is not, we, we have to wait for a big event. You guys are releasing things on a much faster cadence as they're finished. And we're not waiting just for a big event to happen in order to make that happen. When, so. in, on the Power BI side, I mean, we release the desktop every month. 
But the actual service, they do weekly releases on that. So it's not like we're waiting for things. No. Know, we're, and that's also why we went to a model of on the service blog updates, we do like a round of, hey, this is everything that shipped the month before. And so it's, we try and wait to roll it all up and then let everyone know. Plus, I'm still digesting all the announcements from <laughs> July. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that we are getting close to running out of time we here are. on the uh, this beautiful Channel 9 studio set yeah. here at Microsoft. I just, I just don't want to leave. No, no, this is really nice. But I know that they we have a cot right down here. You can yeah. sleep. Oh, Maybe that'd be know. nice. Yeah. The, 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 yeah if, if I can't find you, I know where to find you later. <laughs> um, but this has been a great experience for us getting to come here and spend time at the show. If you're here at the show, or if you are home live streaming this, make sure that you go out and publish those uh, things into ideas.powerbi.com if you have questions. Go follow Guy in a Cube, Guy in a Cube on YouTube, and uh, make sure that you get over and subscribe to our podcast, uh, bifocal.show. And if you're here at the show, come to our booth, Tygraph. Right. And <laughs> Rackspace is in the back as well. Make sure you come by, come for a visit. And you guys, if I'm not mistaken, you're over in the power uh, platform yeah. area yes. over on the show floor. Yes. So we're all here, we're all around, looking forward to engaging and connecting with you. Thank you very much for watching. And guys, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks a bunch. Thank and that, we're out. Scott Holmes and is shared under Creative Commons.